Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested and it's that time of the year again, the end of the year where me and the rest of the Tested team are gonna share with you our favorite things from 2016. I'm gonna kick it off by talking about some gear, some tools, and some books that I love this year. First of all, the Phantom 4 Professional. And it's amazing that DJI released two Phantom 4s this year, the Phantom 4 earlier in the year, and at the end of the year, sneaking it in, the Phantom 4 Professional, which has become my favorite consumer quadcopter. I went to the Arctic with their Inspire 1, and it was maybe a little too bulky, not as versatile as I would have liked, And but I didn't bring the Phantom 4 because it didn't have the image quality that I wanted, but the Phantom 4 Professional has that one inch sensor, has the environmental sensors, environmental awareness on five sides, and I've loved flying this. The footage I've been able to capture with this is amazing. It's what I would pick if I was in the market for a $1,500 quadcopter. Love the Phantom 4 Professional. Now the other major technology to come out this year is of course virtual reality. And it's really changed the way we're gonna interact with video games and computers. We're seeing a lot of hardware and software are proving that. We of course had the launch of the HTC Vive at the beginning of the year, and then also the Oculus Rift, and now the Oculus Touch controllers. But I wanna highlight some of the software, the best games experiences that I felt was on VR that proved that it was different than that just 360 video. And games like Super Hot and Super Hypercube on PSVR and games like Budget Cuts, which isn't even out yet, but the Budget Cuts tech demo were some of my favorite experiences. But the thing I've been really loving is social VR and big screen VR is something I've been spending a lot of time in. It's a virtual chat room where I get to have my desktop, have a big screen and with three other friends have conversations and even record podcasts in virtual reality. It's a platform that I believe really is the future of computing and we're just seeing glimpses of that with consumer VR. Now, another one of my favorite things this year is a new camera. I bought the Canon 5D Mark IV. I'd been shooting on the Canon 60 for about three years now and I thought it was a time for upgrades. So in September, Canon launched the 5D Mark IV and I picked it up and I've been loving shooting with this sense. I tried the 5D Mark III, Adam had one for a long time. I took to conventions. This is a little lighter. Uh, it's still a heavy duty full frame DSLR and the video capture is really what makes this a little different. Being able to shoot and have live view and tap the screen to focus on different subjects. Uh, I've been having a lot of fun shooting some of our, even our tested videos with this camera. And I've been pairing it with a variable ND filter. This is a Tiffin variable ND filter mounted on my 2470-2.8. And some of the videos we shot this year, for example, me going, uh, taking flight lessons uh, with our friend Hoagie De La Plant in his uh, biplane, as well as going down to BlizzCon and shooting a video with uh, Frank's Murloc costumes, all shot with this camera. A lot of fun experimenting both in photography and also video. Now, aside from technology, every year I also recommend some books. And this year I have three books to recommend. Uh, first, no surprise, it's the Hamilton book, the comp official companion book to Hamilton the musical. It's called Hamilton the Revolution, also more affectionately known as the Hamiltome. And uh, when you talk about musicals, the book is also the, the script for the musical, it's all the lyrics. And in this book there is the lyrics for every single song in Hamilton, along with the behind the scenes story of how the musical was developed and interviews with many of the original cast that are in the musical. Love this book. Um, and then a new book that for me is new, but actually has been in print and out of print for a long time. This is The Invisible Art. And I had to dig in eBay to find this book. It was printed by Chronicle Books a couple years ago, and it's all about matte painting. I love matte painting. I don't think there are enough books about matte painting. And so it was a real, real pleasure to discover this book on a matte painting blog of all places. It chronicles the history of matte painting along with the history of film over the past hundred years and spotlights some matte paintings that you may recognize from films like Star Wars or classics, a Hollywood classics in the golden era, and also some matte painters who don't get enough recognition. Now speaking of Star Wars, the final book I wanna recommend is a Star Wars book that people maybe in the United States haven't heard of because it's a French book. And this is a book called Objects of Myth. Um, and it's, even though it's in French, it's mostly a photo book and it has photos I've never seen before of artwork and props 
from the original trilogy. Um, and it's several hundred pages, several hundred photos of marketing material, storyboards, concept art, and new photos of props, costumes, and prosthetics from the original trilogy. Uh, it's a little pricey, if you, but you can import it from Amazon. And it's one of those things that maybe even hardcore Star Wars fans don't even know about if they're just in the States. Uh, another one of my favorite things this year, Snap Fit model kits. These, of course, have been long, around for a long time, but I only just discovered them recently, these Gundam kits. And both Frank and I are completely obsessed and fascinated by how well these are designed and how fun they are to put together. This is a Gundam ball I built earlier this year, took it apart, painted it, and we just accumulated a bunch. You'll definitely see more Snap Fit kits on Test It in the future, in future builds. Now, in past years, I've shared my love of the artist Jason Freeney's work. He's a sculptor we interviewed a couple years ago. He does these amazing anatomical dissections of fictional characters. And this year, there's an explosion of his work that's more accessible to fans. Uh, he has a collaboration with toy manufacturer Mighty Jacks and also Kid Robot. And these figurines, which are anatomical dissections of characters like DC superheroes, even rubber duckies, are just wonderful toys, a little subversive, and I can't get enough of them. One of my favorite ones is actually this guy right here, which is the Bugs Bunny anatomical figure. This is a Kid Robot figure, uh, which is on my last favorite thing of 2016, our new set. We moved into this office six months ago and we're finally home. We have a set built out. This was conceptualized by our production designer, Danica Johnson, and then mocked up in SketchUp and built out by uh, furniture maker Asa Hillis. They did a great job making this set. It's dressed, it's still an evolving thing, and we're gonna be so thrilled shooting against this over the next year. So that's it for my favorite things of this year. The rest of our team are gonna share their favorite things of 2016 all this week, but have a great holiday and we'll see you in 2017.